Today we're going to be looking at the Mazda 3, or as it's known in Japan and China, the Mazda Axla, which is derived from a combination of Accelerate and Excellent. This is a compact class vehicle that was first released in 2004 and replaced the Mazda Protégé. We'll also be looking at the engine swap version, which we're seeing here, although this is massively detuned to make it fit into the qualifications of this race. The Mazda 3 has been one of Mazda's best-selling vehicles and has been offered as both a sedan and a hatchback throughout its life. Earlier generations offered a turbocharged Mazda Speed version of the hatchback version, but this fourth generation that we're seeing in Gran Turismo 7 does not carry the Mazda Speed badging. The Mazda 3 we're using in Gran Turismo 7 is the fourth generation. Mazda decided to drop the Axla nameplate to keep the naming consistent worldwide, so now they're known as Mazda 3s everywhere. This generation debuted in 2019, and although earlier generations had a McPherson strut front layout and a multi-link rear suspension, this Mazda used a cheaper and simpler torsion beam for the rear end, which is said to reduce cabin noise. This will also produce a softer, more comfortable ride, but it's a step away from the sporty feel that many enthusiasts prefer. And although this is a turbocharged vehicle with all-wheel drive for the first time, they got away from the Mazda Speed badging as well, so there's no indication that that's coming back. The interior got a little more grown up as well, with a soft stitched dash pad and a multicolor layout, as well as metal touch points on most of the buttons. So the car is just stepping away from some of its sporty feel and getting a little bit more into the luxury environment. So not all bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it did on our lap. Let's take a look at the Mazda 3 with the stock engine first. It's a very tame and predictable car, so it gives off the impression that it's slow. But this is a little bit misleading. The car isn't exactly slow, it's just really easy to drive. This is mainly due to the all-wheel drive system that comes equipped in this car. It does have a transverse engine layout, so it also has characteristics of a front-wheel drive vehicle in that it has a tendency to push in the corners. This is further exaggerated with the weight distribution of the car being mainly towards the front. The vehicle has 63% of the weight towards the front of the car with only 37% towards the rear. I was able to get a more balanced feel in the car by softening the front versus the rear and I'll have the setup at the end of the video for both cars so stick around for that. With the vehicle being totally built out in ultimate spec, it's performance points ended up at 687 points so it's perfectly able to enter Le Mans without any type of modification and it'll hold its own out there. It goes up another 98 points when you do the engine swap and fully mod the car. So with that layout you would need to pull some power back and add some weight in order to get it into the 700 series races. It had 423 horsepower with only 285 foot-pounds of torque. So it's got some higher power up in the higher revs, and it is a turbo car, so you will have a little bit of a surge, but it's nothing that's not manageable. It doesn't really break the tires loose. It ended up wearing the tires at 10% in the front with only 5% wear in the rear, so it does have that front-wheel drive tendency to it. And we ended up uh, getting right around five laps of fuel with our current setup. Overall, it's not a bad car, but it may not be the most exciting choice when you're looking for something within this range. We ended up with a time of 2 minutes, 6 seconds, .339, which puts it right behind the Daytona Coupe and right in front of the Carrera GTS. Let's go ahead and see how the car handles the engine swap. This is one of four cars that will allow you to install the Mazda 787 race car engine into it but it's the only one that has all-wheel drive as the layout. With the R26B engine swap installed, the car still doesn't really feel all that fast, but it's actually very powerful in this configuration. It just remains predictable and stable because of the all-wheel drive system. 
I actually wasn't really impressed with this car until I started seeing the lap times it was putting down. The engine swapped Mazda 3 is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It picks up 557 horsepower and 291.3 foot-pounds of torque, doubling both torque and horsepower to a total of 989 horsepower and 577 foot-pounds. So this thing picks up a lot of power while only picking up 132 pounds. This engine is also great for fuel efficiency, so even though we doubled the horsepower and the torque, we added another lap to six laps for the fuel usage. It does put a little bit more pressure on the tires as you would expect though, wearing the front tires at 20% and the rears are at around 10%. Unlike most of our turbo cars, this one is actually running the high-end turbo. I usually run medium, but medium was not one of the modification options on this engine, so we went with high to keep it modded. It is quite an expensive swap at 1.2 million. I was lucky enough to get three of these through roulette so far, so I've already done the RX-8 and the FD RX-7, but I don't have one for the FC RX-7 yet, so I'll be holding off on that for a little bit. But we ended up doing a lap of one minute, 49 seconds, 0.773, which actually puts this car in second place on the list so far. So very impressive for what started as a simple Mazda 3. Thank you guys for watching and feel free to pause to copy these layouts and if you would like and subscribe we'd love to see you for more videos.